We're performing the demonstration installation of an Aerodyme AP450-100 steering shimmy damper on a 114 TC. We have unhooked and strapped away the right hand nose door for convenience. All washers and shims to be used are AN960 type. I'll refer to them by suffix number only or by PD and suffix number for the shims. We pre-cleaned the general work area, cleaning away dirt, grease, loose paint from the upper and lower faces of the nose gear pivot lug and the torque tube lug. Check the parallelism of the upper and lower faces of the pivot lug on the nose gear. These faces need to be uh, parallel and not chamfered off for proper installation. File and sand any burrs to, to make these faces, the, the two upper faces and the two lower faces, uh, flat and smooth. Now using the provided AN174-24 bolt we're placing one piece 416 light under the head. We're placing the provided long bushing into the upper lug of the damper. And we're inserting the bolt head up. Typically, we're placing one piece 516 light and one piece 516 against the bottom face of the damper's upper lug. The bushing will be inside these spacer washers. We're placing one piece 416 light under the bottom of the bushing and we're withdrawing the bolt to be flush with the bottom washer. Now we'll slip this assembly over the pivot lug and push the bolt down into the lug to hold things in place. Now at this point we'll swing the shaft under the torque tube lug and you see here we came into contact uh, and we'll need to to go back because we we want to have uh, freedom to slide that damper shaft underneath the torque tube lug without side loading the damper shaft. So we're going to uh, reverse, pull the bolt back up and we're going to move the 516 washer from underneath the damper upper lug. We're going to put it on the top face. In other words, the bolt will now have the 416 light under the head. And then will come the 516 spacer washer around the bushing. We'll retain the 516 light around the bushing where it protrudes through the bottom of the lug and we'll still use the 416 light there. Okay now we'll slip this revised stack onto the pivot lug on the nose gear. push the bolt down some. Now we'll swing the shaft under the the torque tube lug and we see that we do have some clearance there. This is what we're looking for. Okay. The spacer washers which are in between the damper's upper lug and the pivot lug on the nose gear, the spacer washers uh, don't want to be pinched under that bushing. They want to be free to rotate around that bushing. So 
it would be advisable to check them at this time, make sure they're free to rotate, they're not being pinched, and then we'll maybe check it one more time before we complete the installation. Survey says free to rotate. Okay, we're proceeding now. So, next we're going to place one piece 416 washer between the lower face of the nose gear lug and the upper face of the lower lug on the damper. So we're, Tony's withdrawing the bolt into the nose gear lug. He's slipping a 416 in that position so underneath the nose gear lug and above the damper's lower lug. Okay, that is now in position. And now we might want to check that those spacer washers up above are still free to rotate because the bolt will now stay in position. Uh, okay, now we're going to slide the, the provided short bushing up through the lower lug of the damper. Here's the short bushing going up through that lower lug. We're looking to make sure that just a bit of the bushing extends out through the bottom of the lug and we do see a bit there. So now we will install typically one piece 416 light washer over the threaded end of the bolt and install the provided low profile nylock nut. Now we're going to hold the bolt head down as we hold it with our wrench so that our stack stays together and tighten the nut to 25 to 30 inch pounds, not to exceed 30 inch pounds. The torque wrench will be required after, after uh, coming up to light snug by uh, by other methods. Okay, there we are. So we've talked to 30 inch pounds. Now we're going to verify two things. That the damper is free to move up and down a small amount. This should just be up and down positive freedom. And that the damper is free to pivot all the way until it contacts any structure. You shouldn't feel any drag, uh, any pivot drag. Okay. Now we'll swing the damper shaft in under the torque tube lug and position the shaft so that the holes line up. Evaluate the gap between the torque tube lug and the shimmy damper shaft, uh, selecting our shim combination, which could be any combination of washers 10 and 10 light or PD-10 light shims. PD-10L. To close that gap without creating any up or down load on the damper shaft, we just want it perfectly shimmed. Use any combination of 10, 10L, or PD-10L to get that job done. Typically using a 10 under the head, we slide the bolt down through our shim stack and down through the shimmy damper uh, shaft. Now underneath the shaft we'll use again any combination of 10, 10 light or PD 10 light shims to uh, get our alignment for the cotter pin for the low profile castle nut. In this case we're installing a 10 and the low profile castle nut which will bring up by hand to, to hand snug and check the turrets and alignment for the cotter pin. If it's not acceptable uh, we would change that uh, washer and shim stack underneath the shaft until we had good turret alignment. So once we're happy with that shimming uh, we'll then 
snug that nut up with a wrench or your driver and then back off to the closest turret for the pin. At this point we'll stick the pin through and now we want to verify that we can still rotate this bolt stack by hand but with some effort. We don't want free rotation. We want rotation possible with some hand effort. And if it's acceptable, then we uh, will continue and form the pin. Here we go. The last step will be to cotter pin the pivot attach bolt. This is a safety provision because of because drag is possible at the pivot attachment therefore loosening of the nut is possible and therefore we we pin the pivot attachment below the nut we've observed uh, we're unable to get the cotter pin through the pivot bolt because the hole is partially eclipsed by the nut so at this point we will remove the nut and we're going to replace this 416 light washer with a PD416L shim. The pushing had fallen out, so we're going to put that back up in there. We're going to install the shim. Reinstall the nut. Reinstall the nylock once would be acceptable. More than that uh, would require a new one. And the once would only be acceptable if the drag felt appropriate in bringing it up. And now we'll have to retorque to 30 not more than 30 inch-pounds. And looks like we may have a full pinhole now available. So we'll try getting our cotter pin through. Looks good. I'm going to try and dress this pin and form it nice and tight right around the threads of the, uh, the bolt. In, in there nice and tight so it doesn't drag against the, the nose gear block. So we're now pinned at the shaft attach and at the pivot bolt. The installation onto the airplane is complete. So you would now proceed with the hangar, ground, and taxiing tests as set forth in the beta program letter. Or if you're using this video uh, after the beta program is concluded, just follow the installation instructions. Thank you.